Look, we'll labor for hours about taxes or transport, but silence anyone, anyone who dares to discuss shh, human life and the right to be born. Well, MP Brad Trost uh, has broken that sound barrier, but how has he been received? He joins us now from Ottawa. Uh, welcome to you. We were at the same conference in uh, Humboldt, Saskatchewan, when you made a speech. I didn't see any journalists there, but later on, I think they timed it to release it at a certain time. Here's the point. Because you dared to mention, agree or disagree, that, uh, that life begins at conception, you were attacked almost as being treasonous. Uh, I would say some people have uh, uh, attacked or criticized me for that. I would say, in, in all fairness, people have often attributed it to the senior leadership of the prime minister in our party. Haven't found that to be the, the, the slightest bit true. So I, I think this is sometimes a, a little bit of a uh, misconception out there that you can't be a Conservative member of Parliament and be pro-life. Um, you can, and uh, you can do so uh, proudly, even if maybe the Prime Minister doesn't totally agree with you. Well, this is good to hear because, I mean, you know better than most, that media are just obsessed with this issue. I've always found it quite uh, well, ironic, I suppose, that pro-lifers uh, are accused of, of, of being really so interested in this one single issue. We're interested in lots of issues, but it's the, it's not the liberal media who are obsessed with it. They jump over anyone who, de who dares to, to, to even mention it. We now have, of course, MP Stephen Woodsworth, who was on the show, who's bringing this forward. So there is a pro-life call, because there are people who are interested in this. But you're telling me that even though this is now being opened, th this issue, that the Prime Minister's office, the Prime Minister, the party whip, they're, they're not having private conversations with you saying, tone it down? Uh, at this point, I haven't had anyone give a, a direct order or a gag order. Over the years, I've had uh, members of PMO and so forth express to me their preference that I not discuss this. But there's a difference between someone expressing their preference and someone giving direct orders. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, I haven't tabled the legislation directly that Mr. Woodsworth has, or the, the motion that Mr. Woodsworth has. So there's a bit of a difference there. Um, you got to remember, Conservative Party policy says very explicitly, voted on repeatedly by our memberships, every single MP has a duty and a right to vote their conscience and their constituency on issues such as this. So it's black and white in our party policy, so it's fairly difficult to go against what is explicit Conservative Party policy on this issue. Mm -hmm. you know, the Liberal Party had a not dissimilar policy at one time, yet Jean Chrétien was sending uh, people out to make sure that pro-lifers were deselected, he was monitoring, uh, and uh, if this does, if, if, if any motion concerning abortion, and I am convinced, by the way, that uh, at least 75% of Canadians are against public funding of abortion, even if they may be passively pro-choice, but if, if this does go forward, what proportion of the Conservative uh, caucus would vote to limit some of the abortion law we have right now? You know, I think that's a, an open question, and I think having talked with fellow MPs, uh, Conservative MPs reflect Conservative voters across the country. We're very accurate representation at 40%. I think some haven't decided. I think some would be depending on the issue. I think the only real gauge you have is previous votes. Um, mm. Rod Bernouge's previous legislation to oppose coercion, uh, uh, to put a penalties on coercion of abortion. Um, their 90-some MPs in a previous parliament with a smaller caucus voted uh, for his legislation. So my best guess would be it would be very similar to uh, a vote on that line. Mm. Let me ask you, both as a, as a politician and as, as just someone who's interested in, in Canadian politics, why is it that pretty much any issue, declaration of war, closing hospitals, all these things can be discussed, but abortion, which is a very, very viable and, and significant uh, political position, why is it that this one, we're told by so many people, it's not to be discussed and the conversation is over. It's almost unique in that. Well, I've thought about that and my answer is maybe a little different than, than I think most people. Um, I don't think Canadians in general have a problem discussing it, provided it's done respectfully. Mm. But for decades, Canadian political, uh, the, the center of gravity in Canadian politics has been dominated by Quebec. And Quebec elite opinion has been incredibly hostile on this. So I think irrespective of who's the leader, who's the government, who's the party, as the center of Canadian political, uh, the center of gravity in Canadian politics is moving from Quebec to suburban, suburban Ontario and suburban uh, Western Canada, not just on economic issues, but the center of political gravity on social issues like abortion will be more decided by the views of the suburbs of Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. That's an extremely uh, interesting answer. I think that there's a lot to that. And, and with Quebec, it, 
When we think of the demographics of Quebec and how they are so committed to their language and culture, but the very thing that will destroy that language and culture is just having fewer and, and fewer people who embrace it. So you really see that the, the center of Canadian political power moving geographically, going more to the west, to, to suburban areas of, of the large cities in Alberta and Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Well, I think it's, it's there in the numbers. You see it with how the new seats are going to be redistributed in mm. the House of Commons next time. They're almost all going to suburban BC, Calgary, Edmonton, and suburban Ontario. Um, numbers mean votes, and, and votes are, are what decide elections. So on a whole range of issues, elite opinion in Quebec, not always necessarily broad spread populist opinion in Quebec, but elite opinion in Quebec is no longer going to drive the politics of, of this country. Right. The, those MPs who are pro-life, and I, I, I'm not asking you for names, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I assume there are none, well, I assume there are none in the NDP, they probably would whip this issue. Are there any other MPs outside of the Conservative Party, though, who will be supportive of you? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about that, depending on the issue. You have yeah. to remember on Ken Epps' bill, Unborn Victims of Violence, which was criticized as, as a pro-life initiative, but was an initiative where we reached out to people who are not traditionally pro-life, we had a new Democrat, Peter Stelfer of Nova Scotia, vote with the pro-life members of Parliament along with Liberal MPs. Right. So while there may be very strict party discipline, um, I think privately, I think many new Democrats would take a very open mind to this, just as many of their membership take an open mind to issues, because what we're dealing with is often uh, votes and, and issues that deal not with just the, the firmly pro-life Canadians, but those who are maybe in the middle or a little bit gray about uh, about the issue. Yeah, of course. I mean, he, he did that, and and it really was, I think, a, a very reasonable uh, bill. But he was attacked severely, and, and we had uh, Bev Dajelin on, on the gay marriage issue up in uh, was it Churchill, Manitoba, who was deselected because uh, she dared to to vote for the traditional definition of marriage. And this was, I think, a, a Métis woman married to a local Labour leader in in northern Manitoba, <laughs> and they deselected her. But um, ah, there's freedom for you. Fascinating interview. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me here.